Do not love the world. This is a message from chapter 2 from the book of 1 John, verses 15 through 17. So let's go to those verses, beginning at verse 15. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away, and also its lusts, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. When we speak about the world, most of us would say the world as we know it, see it, and experience it. The world, most would say, is what we can touch and feel, the land, the sea, and so on. God created the world so we can have a place where we can live and breathe, and as the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. But the world that John is talking about here is not the world that we know and experience every day. The, this world is the invisible spiritual world, system or world of evil, dominated and ruled by Satan. This is the world that is in total opposition to God, his word, and his children. A believer in Christ must not love such a world. There are two sides in a relationship. The two sides from God's point of view are, are you part of his family or are you part of Satan's? There is no middle ground. You cannot be neutral. You cannot sway here or there. Either you belong to God or you belong to the devil. For instance, worldliness speaks of behavior what we do, what we like to do. The three attitudes associated with worldliness are, number one, lust of the flesh, always wanting to satisfy physical desires. Number two, lust of the eyes, Gaining and accumulating materialistic things. And number three, being boastful or prideful about yourself, obsessed with your status or position in this fallen world. When the devil tempted Eve in the garden, these were the areas he tempted. In the wilderness, the devil did the same thing with Jesus as he tempted Jesus in these same three areas. A true believer in Christ needs to shun worldliness in all its temptations. Worldliness has no place in the heart of a believer. God wants every child of his to have self-control, have a spirit of generosity, and be committed to being a servant. Now we can put on a show and appear to, to not be in love with the world. We can still harbor within our hearts that spirit of worldliness. This is the nature of man. 
where we are so easily pulled here and pulled there. We can live in a world so dominated by the attitude of worldliness. And such people, millions upon the world in the world, do so every day. It does not mean, though, that we as believers in Christ have to follow the same path as these people. When we accepted Christ into our life, we were pulled out of that crowd, out of the multitude. We no longer want to follow the path of sin, wickedness, and rebellion. Now we belong to Christ. We can live in a fallen world. We can love and associate, associate with the unrepentant sinner. But it does not mean we follow the sinful trends of the world. The world offers a lot. Its philosophies, its ideologies, let alone wealth and fame. All of these things are attractive and appeal to the eyes, heart, and mind. But all of this is deceiving. The true nature of these things are evil, harmful, and satanic. Their deadly attractions and theories are against God, the very knowledge of God, and they grasp hold of the souls of men. The world is an enemy of God, so it is an enemy to you and me, believers in Christ. If we allow the lusts of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and being boastful on oneself to take us over, then sin can easily bring us back to our former lives, that being a rebellious sinner against God. This is why believers in Jesus Christ must reject the world and all that it has. God has already told us in his word that the world will be judged. Our true home will be with him. This world, this universe will be done away with. The satanic world system and all its temptations are only temporary. All of it doomed to be destroyed. So why should we, believers in Christ, even want to be part of it and cling to it in any way? None of it will bring us closer to God. We, his children, have to do God's will, be in his will, and know his will. When we do that, we will live forever with him. He will welcome us into his very presence one day. Cast off any notion of sense of worldliness you may have today. Throw it away. Such things will only pull you into a life of sin. Be the light of Christ to this world as we are called to be lights. Be the image of Christ so that the world, the world controlled by Satan, will see you. God wants to call many out of this world, out of the clutches of worldliness and despair and fear, out of the sense of doubt and into his mercy and grace, and away from the worldliness that Satan offers. Father, we thank you, Lord, as you continually open our eyes to what this world offers. This world offers, again, doubt, fear, anxiousness. It offers fame and wealth. But all of that takes us away from you, Lord. 
All of that blinds us to you, your will. All of that pulls us away, brings us back into sin. Today, many live a life that is founded on worldliness, founded on material things, founded on wealth, greed, lust. All of these things, Father, hold back the heart of man. We pray, Father, that you would pull away many that are living such a life, bring them out of such a life, Open their eyes to what they're doing now, Father. Turn them, change them from within, convict them. Many live a life now that, that is against you, rebelling against you. Such life will lead them to, again, judgment. Father, we ask again, you open these lives today, this very second. So that they know that they're living a life of rejection, of sin, of wickedness. But all it is is despair. All it is is doubt. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.